Today's talk is probably going to be a little on the light side, but it's primarily about, I'll uh, have three things. What are the PowerPC instructions for the people that don't know what the issues are? And then L2 VA Beyond Fusion to explain what the problems are. And basically PowerPC has two types of load and store instructions. X form, which is indexed register plus register, or D form, which is register plus offset. The original D form had 16-bit offsets, signed 16-bit offsets, and then they, as they added new instructions, they ran into encoding problems. So there was DS form that the bottom two bits are zero, and DQ form where the bottom four bits must be zero. For example, the LFD instruction, the load 64-bit instruction, is a deform instruction, but the LD instruction, the load 64-bit into a GPR, is a DS instruction. So you have all sorts of fun where uh, if you have an odd address because somebody added a constant to a pointer, it would not allow it as a GPR load, but it would allow it as a FPR load, and we have to at times teach reload not to, not to do this because the transfer instruction in the current machines is a little on the slow inside. DQ instructions tend to be only for quad word and we have some problems using um, the DQ in instructions for like loading constants and all that kind of stuff. So we don't tend to use the DQ form except with just plain numeric offsets. Due to the way the instruction set is is done, the base register, base register zero is not as, uh, uses GPR register zero, it in fact uses location zero. So you have in the normal PowerPC R, which is the GPR register is zero through 31, and B, which is uh, one through 31. And you oftentimes have things where it doesn't work in, in GPR zero. In order to extend the addressing, there's this add is instruction, add immediate shifted, that takes a signed 64-bit um, value, shifts it left 16 bits, and you can then add it to either zero or a base register to form an address. And this is oftentimes used in conjunction with the load or store, where you do the add is from the base register to form the upper part, and then you use the load that has the offset incorporated into it or store. For, as I, for example, add S to do a temporary and then a load byte with a value with a large temporary. I'm prime, PowerPC like MIPS, ARM, and so forth have lots of different ABIs, different implementations and all that kind of stuff. I'm primarily nowadays concerned only with the LFB2 ABI that's used on the Little Endian 64-bit PowerPC servers. So this talk will only talk about that. In the PowerPC, the PowerPC ABI is set up so that everything is always uh, PC relative. Not PC relative, position independent. And so it does not like to have fixed addresses in, in the code. Instead, when you do things, it has a talk pointer. Talk is a table of contents, and all the functions have to currently have to set up a talk pointer to address, and the talk pointer can give you a uh, 65K region, or um, 8K addresses, and so forth. Um, there are three mo memory models. The original one is the, called the low model, and then the medium and large, almost nobody uses large, and I'm not gonna talk about that because it, it, the PowerPC instruction set is not really set up for large addressing. But a uh, medium model means that you, everything that you want to address within talk is, is within the 16K region. So in the PowerPC 64-bit uh, LE system, there are two entry points. One is, is the external entry point that is called through function pointers or through what's called the PLIT, the program linkage table. And the address of the function must be in R12 and it uses one or two instructions. You currently add is and add i 
to um, form the talk address in R2. And, but if the function it was called from another function in the same t that uses the same talk, it will skip those first two instructions and go straight to the um, internal entry point that ha assumes R2 has the talk value loaded up. And then the, um, if, if you have a program that has a lot of stuff and that ha has to break it into multiple talk regions or you're calling through a shared library, the linker creates PLTs. These are program linkage tables similar to other systems where it calls into a little stub and the stub loads up the appropriate pointers and jumps to the ex actual function. Um, for example, with a shared library, you don't know where things are going to be. And because of the way the, the ABI is, is designed, there's a fixed offset in the stack to store the talk pointer for, for the caller. So when something calls in, you can store the talk, you, you store the talk pointer there and it's assumed when it's restoring it that that talk pointer is in that location. And it calls to direct functions, have a no-op afterwards, and the linker will say, oh, that, that is called to a different uh, talk location or through a put, and it then does the load uh, R2 24 comma 1 to reload the thing. And it will turn, off, turn off that load back into a no-op if, if it's direct. And if you're calling in a direct function in LE, it has to be R12, and, and then it moves it into the CTR register. PowerPC only has two registers that can do an indirect jump through. But the, co the code expects it in R12. And again, here's an example of just adding a 1.0. So it, load, it has the um, first two lines are the external entry point, and then the next line just says where the internal and external entry points are. It loads up the, the ADIS loads up the first part, the high part of the thing with the talk pointer, then it loads up the floating point constant, does an add, and then return. And static addresses also are in the talk area. So things that are static as opposed to um, global can be addressed from the talk pointer directly. Things that are global due to the ELF semantics and the fact that the code is, is always compiled position independent, you have to put a pointer in the talk area and then load that pointer. Um, so here it, it has the external entry point they move from link register, copies it into a GPR and stores it, creates the stack that's the store to double update, and then, the, then you're calling the function, the BL, and the no-op that may or may not become uh, a load, a reload of the R2, add I, load, and so forth. And, yes? Uh, Yes. So if it's call, if you're calling printf, for example, or sign, or whatever, something that's in a shared library, it will change the bl printf to bl got dot printf or plt dot printf. What I, I forget the exact name uses, which is a plt stub that loads up the printf address from the talk um, into R12 and does anything. It stores R2 into the 24 of the stack and then jumps to the thing. Uh, does it all work also happen if the object is too large? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, if the object is too large of a single object, it will have to, oftentimes for conditional code, reverse the sense of the test, because the conditional jumps have a much shorter offset range than the uh, global offset. The, the branch and, and call have a larger offset range and it will jump around it and then do the, the, the call. But if, it, if, if you have a really large function, it will probably have, you have to use the large model and it will have to load up an address and, and, and uh, treat it as an indirect function because it, 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 wouldn't, the, it doesn't fit into the offset range. Like 
<laughs> well, it, it may happen with, Fort, yeah. with really large Fortran code, but normal users don't tend to see, see this. And yeah, like a lot of comp architectures, when you use large model, you, you're, not opt you're not interested in performance, you're interested in it actually working. Um, right, currently IBM uses a fairly simplistic numbering system, power seven, uh, power eight, power nine, so forth. Power eight was about three years ago, two, three years ago, and it added instructions for, added what we call fusion. It uses the same instructions. Power eight added additional instructions, but in this case, it looks at existing instructions, so that if you see an addist followed by a load to a GPR using the target register that the ADIS set up. Um, it will fuse those two, two, two things together and internally generate one micro-op instead of two micro-ops. Normally you'd have to, you'd, you might want to make the ADIS further away so that you can put other instructions in between. But the power aid fusion is fairly limited. It's only load of GPR registers and you can only load base registers, R1 through R31, not R0, not floating point registers, and, and so forth. There's also a load and update form of the instructions, which internally are cracked to load and then update. Those are not supported. The signed load byte, or we don't have a load byte with sign extension, but load half word and load word with sign extension also do not fuse. So right now, the, the compiler says, oh, you're optimizing at higher optimization levels, O2 or higher, and you didn't use the switch or whatever, it will change a load signed word or a load half word signed into a un load unsigned, so it will fuse with the thing and then, then the explicit sign extension. And the first implementation of Fusion, which I did probably about three years ago, I didn't have the, the time to rewrite all of the addressing stuff. And this talk will cover some of the things that I want to do in, in terms of this over GCC 9, GCC 10 timeframes. So it used the peephole, uh, peephole 2. And the peephole 2 said, oh, if you see a um, ADIS instruction that feeds into a load, and it happens to be work, work fine, it will fuse them together into one instruction, so, and you keep them together rather than trusting other passes to not optimize things or whatever. And so it has this big combination instruction that has both the ADIS and the, um, the load. So, however, um, because it's a back end, you know, people two optimizations occur after the register allocation, but before the final uh, optimization. And we do have problems where sometimes other op optimizations before register allocation might, you might not see the ADIS at that, that way. And also, if you do the load two times, it doesn't, doesn't commonize it. Or the other thing that I've seen is, is um, it will, pick, let's say, register 10 to load up, do all the stuff, and then reload after GCSE, which is my least, one of my least favorite passes in the compiler, decided, oh, we, the registers aren't good enough. I'm going to reallocate all the registers, even though I've already allocated them the first time, and, and it'll pick R0 or floating point registers, which don't fuse. So we had to make sure that the predicates and the constraints are really tight. In fact, as far as I can tell, reload after GCSE, or at least two or three years ago, did not look at the constraints, it only looked at the predicates. So originally I had a looser predicate and a tighter constraint, but it didn't, it, it said, oh, I'm going to ignore the constraints and just use the predicate. We designed a new set of fusion that was much more general, uh, that the ADIS followed by either load or store can be fused, and the ADIS does not have to use the same register that's being loaded. And this is more general. 
the compiler has, I, I added um, peephole twos also for this, but it didn't have time due to the release schedule to, to finish it. So it only does it for floating point, it does not do it for, for integers. The problem is, by the time Power 9 came around, that feature got dropped from the hardware. So right now we are doing fusion where, we, where the machine doesn't actually support the fusion. I mean, they're, they're just separate instructions and it's a scheduling thing, but, um, but new, newer versions may, we may have fusion again, we may not. So this is one of the things I'm wanting to, to do. I also, there also was an intermediate form called talk fusion. The idea behind talk fusion was is it was supposed to be the, the entryway to doing the stuff earlier. And um, unfortunately I had a coding error and you couldn't use talk fusion without using one or two other options. And so it never worked. And then I did some spec runs and I couldn't get any performance out of it. So we just recently deleted it. My, my contention is, is oftentimes the talk addressing is done too early. Uh, talk, the register splitting. At expand time, it knows what the legitimate address forms are. And sometimes you don't have particular address forms. And I tend to feel that it's better to believe that you have better forms of addressing before register allocation. And then after register allocation, you, you split it up. And fusion, of course, and then the, there's issues with constants. As I said, with, with expand, the problem is, is that um, things are done too early. Sometimes things are done too late, but in this particular case, I, th I, I think that it's better to push it off to around the register allocation time rather, rather than early on to do it. For example, up until recently, in 128, could only be addressed by a single, in a single register due to various problems. Um, and so no address of int 128 could be anything but a single pointer. Whereas if you had something that was before, just before register allocation, you could, you could allow the addresses and then simplify things as needed. Right now, register allocation splits Right now, we do believe that the talk addressing is a single instruction and register allocation then splits it because it can't do it. it. It says, oh, I can't actually find a constraint that matches a talk address. So it, it then says, oh, maybe I'll do a, an RTX high, gen high, and then use the low sum attribute and, and it'll create the address that way. And this means in, in particular, that if you have, for example, increment of a static variable, you will see two version, two addresses of the load addis, the first addis that was split from the load, and then the second addis that was split from the store. And for example, um, adding two var variables in the same static. If it's the same address, it oftentimes will will optimize these things. But here. As you can see, there are two, two addresses um, from essentially the same address. And as I've mentioned before, the fusion for Power 8 is done way at, towards the end of the, of the compilation process. And it, I think it's better to do that earlier. You know, again, you don't want to do it too early before CSE, I think, is too, is too early. But between CSE and register allocation, where you you take the talk address that you might want to fuse and create a new fusion instant. Uh, and I've seen cases where it gets allocated late and changes and all that kind of stuff, as I've said before. The other thing that I, this is just more of a minor nit that while I'm in the area I want to fix because I've been looking at this for 10 years is floating point constants are, tree, the compiler pretends that it supports floating point constants in the instruction, you know, so that you could do an F add with a 1.0. And it's only at register allocation time, much like with the talk fusion, 
where it then pushes it to the uh, stack. But the problem is, is it doesn't, uh, if you're using the same constant over and over again, C G or CSE doesn't find, find these uses and so forth, and you'll have multiple addresses and so forth. And some of the constants, particularly vector constants, oftentimes when it creates this constant at register allocation time, it only uses a single register. So it doesn't realize it could have used an, an X form instruction, a register plus register, to, to do the thing. And here are the things that I have changed or want to change, have changed in a private branch. And it, it hasn't yet been submitted or anything like that. Um, I have a small pass that recognizes when there are multiple references to the same instant. We use um, the option that all statics uh, section anchors are, are the same address. Constants aren't treated that way, even though they are considered part of the talk. But at least things within the static area, you know, if you have A of 0 and A of 1 and so forth, it will recognize this. And it will then create the reference just before register allocation. Register allocation then doesn't have to split the address because it's already been pre-split. And because it's looking at a basic block, this is only done at a basic block level, it, it can recognize all the references in that block, but it doesn't look at all the blocks in the program. I, t I tend to think that, and this is one of the things I, I want to play with later, is that you don't want to make this too heavyweight. You don't want to do CSE. If, if, for example, you are already spilling GPR registers, you don't want to force another GPR register to be spilled to save a one cycle instruction. You know, you have a load and a store to, to spill it and then when you're using it. So I, I, I want to rein it in, in term, but I, I do want to start looking at loops, that, optimizing it for small loops not only a basic block, but a small loop that doesn't involve call instructions. Uh, yes, Bill. Uh, just a question. If you uh, were to solve the problem with the talk addressing being in one instruction too long, and, and right. that out earlier, and allow CSE and Combine to get their hands on it, would that effectively do what you're doing here? It might, but it, it also might force more copy. The problem is, is right now, it says, oh, well, I can put this whole pointer in, into the thing. So you have the static address plus zero, static address plus two, static address plus 10, all as separate entities. Whereas it would be not, this, what this pass does is saying, oh, I'm actually, I, I can load the static address in one register and then use wow. offset zero, offset one, offset 10, in, and so forth off of that one base register. So the idea is, is to create essentially a base register, I think in terms of what Z uses and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay, so that, that would be above and beyond what combined and CSE are doing. Right. Okay. And it, is that not just active sections? What? Is that not just the same as the active sections? Um, well, yeah, well, what it does is, what I'd like is a, is a base register of the anchor section but if you only have one reference, you want to fold it in. But if you have more than one reference, yeah, you want to take the address of it, but not fold it in. And right now, it, fold, it always folds it in. It doesn't have any knowledge when it's doing the, the combined pass. It says, oh, there are six other uses of this pointer. Instead, it, it folds the address into, into that. And I, I, that's one of the things I want to look at in, in doing. I think they have the same problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll I'll reach out to the your guys and all to see if if we do have a common problem and can fix it in a common way. Yeah. It may be the code is the intention is there, but it 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 right. doesn't actually work. We are of course running into the runway. We have what about two months before GCC 9 freezes, but it, it could always be a GCC 10 thing rather than a GCC 9 thing. Yeah, x86 um, has the larger addresses where, and all, it may work in some restricted cases because you're shortening the instruction size and then you have better iCache hit also. 
but that tends to be a second level effect. I've seen this at AMD once or twice in, in um, where shortening the instruction actually boosted whatever magic spec benchmark we were looking at. But it tends, it, it's one of these things that it, you bounce it down here, it pops up here. The, the joy of compilation. And then the other big thing is I want to rewrite the fusion stuff. Now the current machine, as I said, doesn't have fusion and I want to work around that. But it, you know, the Power 8 machine is still quite heavily used in the field and people have that. And, but it, it has always ignored, not ignored, it has always, I knew I wanted to do this, but I, I, at the time I only had the peephole support and we went with that. And you know, it's a, I'll, do the, I'll do the right thing later. Well, of course, three or four years later, it's probably time to do the right thing, but. And as I was talking constants also, I want to, you know, the constant is a separate issue, but every time I look at it, <laughs> I think I'm at the end of the talk. Yeah, one of the other things we want to do is investigate whether to create the constant in the vector register. Right now, the only constants we create are zero and negative zero um, for floating point constants. For, we have some vector constants, we, depending on the thing, and it may make sense to look at how can I create these constants better. My feeling is on the current machines, you don't want to load up one and then convert that to a floating point. I think that, that will, it will still be faster to do a load from memory, but there may be other ways that we can do it. Um, or in, in, in fact, created on some machines, created in the GPR side where you can do load immediates of various values and use direct move to ship it off to the other side, depending on the speed of the, of the direct move instruction. And I believe I'm at the end of the talk, so. <laughs> Questions or, yeah. Have you measured any performance improvements when uh, fusion actually works or is it largely irrelevant? In terms of Power 8, the machine that has fusion, Pearlbench on spec 2006 shows a modest performance gain, 3%, so, and nothing degrades compared to not having fusion. Um, in terms of Power 9, the machine that does not have fusion, we act, if you turn off fusion, it, it actually boosts three or four of the things. And um, the little code that I've done before to commonize the pointers and all adds three, um, one to three percent on several of the benchmarks but the, it's the same benchmarks that speed up when you turn off Fusion. Other than the one benchmark we like, which is 403.gcc, uh, because, yeah, we, we like GCC, but it's also our experience that GC, the 403 GCC benchmark is the one that is most correlated to most user code that's not floating point or whatever. But it's yeah. Well, well, yeah. But having something that is yeah. common that we can each have enough that we can get our our particular performance gains w would work. I, I just need to bone up more on the ARM architecture. That's the one architecture I actually haven't worked on. <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and also in terms of commonizing, if you have other operations that pair easily that might not be ad addressing. One of the problems is, is 
if you have too aggressive of fusion, you can really slow down the compiler because you're now checking all the 10,000 different combinations. How am I doing time-wise? Uh, pretty good. So, um, if, if uh, you know, we've got time for a few minutes questions or discussion, if, if you wanted to bring yeah. up any discussion points. Yeah. From a uh, distribution point of view, uh, if you want to uh, use the, you, you mentioned that uh, uh, Fusion is not uh, available in R9. Right. So, if you want uh, code to be generated without the Fusion, what uh, the options would you use to not generate at, at the M2 or something? Yeah, it's, well, the simplest one, well, if you say the CPU, right now, the CPU Power 9 turns on both the, the Power 9 Fusion, which, as I said, was designed, put in before the, we realized the hardware wasn't going to support it. And, uh, you know, I do plan to remove that in GCC 9, but right now, just saying minus M, no Power 8 Fusion. We'll, we'll turn off the fusion on both Power 8 and Power 9. And Power 9 fusion um, requires Power 8 fusion, so it won't turn on the Power 9 fusion if Power 8 is not there. When you set your floating point constants and allow mm -hmm. all the operations directly, have you tried actually splitting them out during expand? And then if they've got a high enough cost, CSE yeah. Merge them. Right, right. Uh, and if not combined, can then. Yeah. I, I, I haven't yet. Right. And so, so, how does it work? A floating point is just a register. Uh, operands just allows a button. Yes. Wow. Right. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. As I said, every time I look at this, I, I, I do this, but I oftentimes have other things I'm doing. And the first step is just splitting out doing expand and letting right. them well, well, we do actually split it out, and it combines it. What I'm talking about is pushing it to the constant pool. I don't think, yeah. yeah. But I'm going to do that by just making them all essentially move operations that move right, right. values. Yeah. And then only those get. Yeah. yeah. But the costing then still works in those. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And because you're always going to load the thing anyway, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least then CSE can find the... Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want to do is move, move that earlier and, and all that kind of stuff so CSE can find it and, and things like that. But, you know, sometimes you wish you could go back and throttle either yourself or somebody else who, who made these decisions. Yeah, I have to kill myself at least. <laughs> yeah, I, back, back when I worked at uh, OSF, I put in the pass for the, for the, uh, deck for the MIPS and then the, eventually the deck machine. And I happened to have mono at the time. And I looked at it six months later and I said, what idiot wrote this? Oh, wait a minute, I had mono at the time. So yeah. And you always go back, you always second guess yourself and you, you know, things will always be different and machines will be different and all that kind of stuff. So, And sometimes you put in optimizations that aren't. <laughs> and particularly if you're doing this stuff w well before you have silicon, you know, you know, they they try to make the timers and the simulation work, but. <laughs> Quite frankly, the GCC model of handling complex constants is not very clever. Yeah. Um, there's an assumption that you can address a constant in a literal form from almost anywhere. And I know a very few risk machines that could really do that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, unless you have a talk type system or something else so or base pointers. You end up with some level of indirect. Yeah. Uh, yeah, another feature that they have is IBM long double is a pair of doubles, so they split out the long double constants into two separate constants, which causes other problems because it no longer looks like a long double. But you know, my other talks in previous years about IEEE 128 w will solve that once we get all the pieces together and we can actually move distributions to, to do that. But I, I didn't put anything about 128 this time, float 128 this time. Other questions or break or start off the next PowerPC talks? Um, so if, if there are no more uh, questions, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to, can we hold on to your sure. to restart the next one just for people yeah. who might want to come in from the other session? Yeah. Um, in the meantime, uh, stop in about 15 minutes. Uh, in the meantime, uh, thank Michael again.
okay?